For this video, we're going to be working on getting the hot end totally connected with the x-axis motor. And we'll be doing this with the timing belt. The timing belt is basically very similar to a bicycle chain, but instead of having the teeth on the sprocket, we're going to be having the teeth on the belt. Now the teeth on the belt are going to be going around what's known as a gear. This is going to be attached to the x-axis and is found just behind the QR code. We're going to be applying some tension to that belt with belt tensioner. Not a very exciting name. But if we don't put a good amount of tension onto this belt, then it means when it's running back and forth on the x-axis, it's actually going to be skipping over all of the gear teeth. And we can end up with a print that normally wants to print upwards, and then every once in a while, it skips. Prints upwards, skips another way. So something that we'll want to avoid. Uh, it also is something that is a little bit of a maintenance, so check on the tightness of it about every six months. But for now, we're just going to be working on getting the head nice and fitted. And we're going to be starting off by grabbing, again, your two-sided wrench, and we're going to be working on the eccentric nuts. So we've got two wheels on the very top, and then one wheel on the very, very bottom. And we can loosen or tighten this wheel and really get the x-axis to be as smooth as possible. Now, because your x-axis is actually going to be moving a ton, you don't want to have all of this wobbly frame. So we do want to tighten it up a little bit. But when we start to push it from left to right, we actually want it to have a little bit of momentum. So as I push this, it actually does slide for a little bit afterwards. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we can grab our belt and pass it through the holes around the gear on the x-axis and send it through the frame. Now this step can be a little tricky. So a good trick is to actually flip the belt upside down so the curve wants to come out of the hole and then flip it over the right way around as it comes over the gear. There we go, it's come out and now I can flip the belt so the teeth are on the inside which is the correct orientation. And I'm gonna take the other side of our belt and pass it through the very bottom. So now our belt is riding on either side of the gear, and that's looking good. And now I can pass the belt through the channel on the x-axis so that it comes out on the other side. And there we go. Now I have the belt running through the channel on the very top and the other end coming on this side. Now we're going to spin the 3D printer around so you can see the back side. And what I want you to notice is that just on the underside we actually have two forks that are coming out. But there's a little slit in between each side. And this is where we're going to be pushing the belt through those forks. And Ideally, we want to have, well, we want to give it the most amount of slack possible. Uh, for reasons that we'll actually cover next with the belt tensioner, you want to give it the most amount of slack possible. So you've got all this kind of drooping cable and nothing is super tight against the frame. So now we can flip our printer around again and we can work on the belt tensioner. Now the belt tensioner works in a very, very similar way to our uh, frame on the very top where it has T-nuts on the back and normal bolts on the front. But to attach this onto our frame, we're actually gonna be using two Allen keys in a really, really handy trick where we use the largest Allen key as a little bit of a lever while we use the second largest Allen key to tighten the two T-nuts to the frame. Now these should come automatically kind of tight so we can just start and loosen the two T-nuts. Then we can take our belt tensioner and put it onto the frame and we're trying to pass the belt over the two bearings on there. And there we go. So now it's attached onto the frame and we can still move this but obviously it isn't attached. So with our largest allen key we actually want to pop it in between the very end of the extrusion and just behind the bearing. 
That way it can work like a lever and we can actually apply some leverage and put some tension on that. So I'm going to tighten down the T-nut and I'm going to be looking through this side to make sure that my T-nut is in the correct orientation. So it should have gone in horizontal and then I'm going to just check on the side and making sure that it goes into the vertical orientation. There we go. So I'm not tightening it all the way down because now I can apply some really good tension with this Allen key and then fully tighten this. There we go. And so now with only one bolt holding it, it should keep it pretty hold, pretty well temporarily held to the frame. I can also straighten out uh, my belt tensioner a little bit so I don't get rubbing on either side of my frame. And now I have access to look at the T-nut on the other side. This is another place where I can look very simply and as I loosen it or tighten it, I should be able to see the T-nut rotate into the correct orientation and there we go. Now it is fully vertical and our belt tensioner is nice and locked in place. Now I can move my hot end side to side and it should be held into the frame nice and tightly. 